Hello and welcome to Wizards, Warriors and Words, a fantasy writing advice podcast. I'm Jed Hearn and I'm joined by my co-hosts, starting with Dirk Ashton. Hello, I'm Dirk Ashton and I am the author of the Paternus Trilogy, Epic Urban Fantasy. Michael R. Fletcher. Oh shit. Uh, hi, uh, Michael R. Fletcher, author of the Obsidian Path Trilogy, which is finished. So yeah. Nice. And Rob yeah. J. Hayes. Hi, I'm Rob J. Hayes, author of uh, the War Eternal series, of which book four is going to be releasing in May. Awesome. Nice. And uh, in case you didn't listen or watch last week's episode, we are continuing on in this show with our cover critiques and blurb critiques. So uh, if you didn't hear last episode, basically we've had a couple of you awesome listeners kindly volunteer your published books for us to give feedback on. Um, and we're going to continue going through that now. So uh, let me get this screen share up and I will- Roasting people's covers and blurbs. That's it. So yeah, as look at the disclaimer again, like for last episode, which is going to be very harsh in this. It's all about trying to improve the book. So apologies in advance for <laughs> feelings. And these, um, are, these are very visual episodes. So yes. you want, the, you want and the, also that as well. full effect with the hump, you need to uh, look at the YouTube uh, video. All right. Uh, on the YouTube, by the way, you can find out by just going, uh, if you just go on YouTube and search like Wizard Warriors words, it should come up there. Okay. So, so uh, how, how brutal are we being here? Oh yeah. Uh, <laughs> this one's gonna, this one's gonna sting. Yeah. Yep. Uh, sorry, so sorry, the book Thomas. is called Stone and Shield. Um, and yeah, do we want to, do we want to go? Do, this do the cover. Okay. The cover. I hate it. It's terrible. It's awful. Yeah. Sorry, Thomas. Sorry. It doesn't, it looks like something out of the birds in Halloween. Um, yeah. The it, um, author it, name is so tiny. It's almost it's really tiny. I don't like the font. Oh, it's, I hate um, the font. The total uh, stone at shield. Anywhere. Or is that supposed to be? And I think that's supposed to be the on sign, isn't it? Yeah. It's supposed to be, but I mean, it's or it's, or like it's it. and in French. It could be and in French. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. Astonished. Yeah, it's like yeah, it's silhouette just... of some people with axes in a forest and birds, and then an orangey sky and a horrific. It almost it almost looked bond. like uh, what in thumbnail I thought it was telephone poles. Yeah. With power lines, <laughs> um. So it looked urban. It looked birds. It looked Halloween to me. Um. This doesn't say fantasy to me at all. The only thing that says fancy is the fact that they are carrying axes. And the problem is I didn't even see that at first because I was too busy no. just going, ah. Yeah, they were very yeah. small. It just, it doesn't work for me at all. But I can't give you any uh, any um, ideas on, on what it should be until we look at the blurb. I mean, to be honest, it, it's it's called Stone and Shield. And, uh, you know, there's this I guy see some stone. And stuff. Maybe just have like an axe yeah. and a shield on the cover. Yeah. Yeah. An axe yep. resting on some stone, maybe. I don't know. Like, yep. I do feel yeah. that the cover does need to be reworked almost in, or, entirely. You know, unfortunately. Uh, a uh, a symbol. It looks almost Norse because yeah. of the axes. And, so and just a just Norse a symbol in stone with a with an axe over the top of it. Just go full on James Gwynn, Faithful in the Fallen, or yeah. John Gwynn, Faithful in the Fallen. I would and, and change the font because that font yeah. just says cartoon. Yeah, yeah. it looks. Yeah. Yeah, unfortunately, yeah, sorry, Thomas, feel bad saying this, but yeah, this does not look like a good cover. And I think yeah, it's a scrap it, it cover. Yeah, yeah. I think it, it feels self-made and I understand that temptation because, you know, when you're starting out, you want to save money and it's very expensive yeah, to get a cover artist, but sure. just save up, get a decent cover artist. Um, you can get some it, it nice symbols. There are, there are some, companies. You can get you some can really get nice symbol, symbol kind of stock style covers from, from companies that, yeah. sell them for you know a couple hundred bucks yeah exactly so that's a good option if and, that, you know yeah. you could you could get like yeah a, if it's a some sort of norse thing which we're assuming from the fact that there are axes axe just says yeah. norse let's be fair it does yeah look um, at look at the covers on on john gwynn's faithful and fallen yeah. people people have people have copied those to great um effect well, I mean, to be honest, the, the, it, it's very, it's another very classic sort of fancy style, which is have a sword or a yeah. weapon of some sort on your yeah. cover, because Something it just like, immediately just says fantasy. Yeah. Just use an axe and some stone. Yeah. Um, it doesn't, the font doesn't even have to be that fancy. No. 
but just something, something other than the cartoon font. See, I, I actually think that is a pretty cover that makes me go, yeah, yeah they, are, that they, out. Are, they are it's the great, great covers and you know exactly what it is, yep. even in thumbnail, as soon as you see it. Um, all the little, I just now noticed all the little guys with spears and shields down here. Yeah. So yeah, we're talking about the cover of Malice by John Quinn, just for our podcast listeners. Yeah, well worth looking up. I think it's a great example of how to do the single. It's basically sword. just a um, sword. Yeah, very. Yeah, well, all of them, all cover. of them are just a weapon. Yeah, there's a sword, there's an axe, there's, there's a, a hammer, spear, and there's a spear, a spear and a hammer. Yeah, yeah, they're on my bookshelf. They're very, they're very pretty. Books. They've got lovely spines as well. Yeah. Mm. That and is John Quinn is a lovely man. He is with the most epic author photo ever. <laughs> yeah in his yeah. chain mail suit we actually had yeah, him on this with, podcast as well if you haven't listened to that episode dogs. so go yeah. back and listen to that um cool let's What's look at the blurb, blurb for this one uh the emperor is dead his son now inherits the throne to the Ambrosian empire and he dreams of greatness the mercenaries of the stone and the shield have fulfilled their contract in the southern deserts of Arv- how do you say that and vesh yeah I'm now they must caught. begin their journey to the caught. imperial capital of emerald city to be paid a long march and an odd job stand between them, a hefty payment, and possible retirement. But as they march, the empire they thought they knew is changing. In the far west, the counselors of Gileon seek answers to their own problems and those that would affect the future of the world. Their source of power nears its end. Their ties to the empire are failing. Now yeah, they must this, decide which part of their world matters most. This isn't a blurb. This is an info dump. Yeah, you need to uh, start with that. I mean, I'm, I was only hooked when, it, when I saw their, sor- their source of power nears its end. Their ties to the empire are failing, right? Now I'm hooked. I mean, there's something here. Um, I'm trying to think. We want to compare. You want to compare your book with other books, right? Is this Game of Thrones? Is this Wheel of Time? Is this, you don't have to say that. But think about how what what is it that are the hooks and exciting about those books? This is obviously epic fantasy. Um, it is. It it is to me. There's a long march and and uh, I don't see anything about magic though. I don't see anything about monsters. I don't see anything about grand battles. Right. I re- I'm hearing about inheriting and dreaming and marching and journey uh and uh seeking answers to their own problems it's those things do not hook me right um i'm sure there are battles in here there may be dragons there may be uh otherwise um it needs to be we need the hooky stuff we need, we need things that are interesting. Um, we don't know if this, I mean, I don't know if this is fantasy or historical fiction, right? Yeah. Um, is this more like Guy Gabriel K? Right? You know, I, I Be, it would that, give us a character. Has very little or no magic. Mm, agree with that, Rob. Right. I, I think the first thing you want to do is, I mean, rework it entirely. Give us a character. Who, Someone you know, is, I mean, I'm guessing yeah. this thing. Judging by the uh, by yeah, by the, Nate, the blurb, it's about a group of characters rather than a prince, single, pick one. If this pick a character, prince, yeah, if this prince is the main character, his son, the emperor is dead. His son, right? right? But name the son. Give us the son and yeah. focus the blurb around him. What he's trying to do, his, his you know his problems, his quest, whatever. But focus it around a character. Yeah, let's see what they say down here. Again, go through and look at what people uh, were drawn to in your uh, reviews, which looked like they got. um, Look at what classical fantasy style, fantastic debut novel, right? Uh, Vivid detail, written in vivid detail, uh, in a classic fantasy fantasy style, right? Um, Multiple POVs. So think about what this reminds you of. I mean, there is advantage to writing blurbs after you get some reviews in, Mm. because then you can see what what is appealing to people. Um, 
Actually, a that great, last a review, great, a great makes gritty, a grim, dark adventure. Okay. Now yeah, I cool, have some idea cool of what this is about. A new vain emperor sits on the throne, dreaming of glory and contest, a stirring the West as power shifts and a band blurb. of mercenaries. This is a blurb. Yeah. This guy, James Hardward Jones, wrote you a blurb. A band of mercenaries <laughs> known as the Shield and Stone make way to return to the imperial capital. See, that's a blurb right that there. That would work I as am... a first paragraph for a blurb. And, mm. and yeah, then, you know, give, it, give us another paragraph where you give us a character or something like that, something that can, you know, draw people in and go learn about this person, learn about yeah. whatever's going on. Um, and then and then maybe, like, this. you know, a at great, the end, gritty, say, gritty, like... Adventure. This yeah. is... Now it's positioned before from looking at the... Uh, at, at the book and from looking at the blurb i have no idea what this is yeah. right um now i know this is good this yeah. guy james harwood should be writing people's blurbs yeah. <laughs> um if you know this guy say hey can i just use that <laughs> and then to be honest at, at the good. end because we've i mean we've had a lot of problems trying to figure out what this is at, at the end have like the comparisons to other authors what they've done because that way, it, it's another way of helping solidify what genre it is, what people are getting it themselves in for. Agreed. Which, yeah, kind of needed. Yeah, that's that's it right there. Look at that. And, yeah. Awesome. So, yeah, okay, we, we we're do done. everything. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Uh, okay, the last one here. Um, this one's a real rough. I don't even know what genre this is. The steel trap. That also reminds me more of like, um, <laughs> like maybe this is maybe this is something meets uh, Prince of Thorns. You know, um, it reminds me a little. That sounded. But this is this is a uh, Harriet Potter. Yeah, <laughs> kind of looks what like the that. So the book is called I mean... the Susie. Let's just give a bit of background first. This book is called the Susie Steel Adventures. Um, looks like some sort of school no, it's called the steel trap the the series is the, the susie steel adventures. oh there susie we go steel adventures the steel trap this cover works perfectly if you're writing i mean as far as i'm concerned if you're writing children's yeah 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 children's this, fantasy this urban that. fantasy yeah i think it looks great yeah, immediately yeah. there's like Harry Potter esque magic yeah. school. There's yeah. there's ones, but also with modern technology because hey, there's a yeah. girl with a coffee and another girl with a drone, and there's a yeah. magic cat car in the background. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's Ooh, a very I cool like cover. Like, it's a very cool really cover. Like that, Matt. I would move my uh, make make the name bigger at the bottom. Make yeah. Steel Trap larger. Um, yeah, yeah. Have, have the uh, move, the title and move, and move the. Uh, nudge the uh title or the the author name down because that cat is really cool um i mean if this is a grimdark novel you failed completely <laughs> if it's a fantasy novel for kids that's brilliant yeah yeah, yeah. i mean i, I hate it blood. but uh you know <laughs> it's you just, you, the genre you just don't read man, that then. yeah yeah exactly yeah, let's look at the blurb like, to see if we actually like fun. were on point with the genre guessing um Susie has a heart of gold, a set of bad dreams, and a hidden destiny. Six months ago, her father left on a work trip, leaving Susie to her hobby of chasing away nannies. That is, until the mysterious and glamorous Cassandra roars into her life, driving a red sports car and promising to be the best of friends. When Susie stumbles on a warning intended for her father, a world of magic, spirits, and intrigue beckons. Did she discover the truth, avoid Start being expelled that. from school, we don't want and keep a secret ago. society off her back? If she's to have a ghost of a chance, she'll need the help of her best friends, one grumpy cat, and a whole lot of daring. Okay, that blurb now throws me off a bit because I feel like it's not I as like, clear. Uh, I would just get rid of everything up until... When up you're... And, you, up gotta, until you gotta think about Susie your audience, stumbles right? on a warning intended for her father. Uh, this stuff I like. The other stuff I... The the glamorous Cassandra roars driving red promised to be the best of friends. Uh, but is she a, a witch? I want her to be a witch. I want her for to a be a kid's be novel. Something. That's a great blurb. You think so? Well, even, imagine even the, you're when I read six, girl, when I read six six months ago, I'm like, 
Right? Yeah, but you're, I don't want you're to a grumpy people. old man too. Yeah. Remember being yeah. an energetic like 14 year old, and you I see do. that cover and you're like, that's cool. I want to read yeah. that. And yeah. now you're looking for more detail. It's you you write a different blurb for a 14 year old kid than you do for a 40 year old grimdark fan. 40 year old grimdark fan, you go. There was a sword. There was blood. Souls <laughs> got torn. An empire fell. <laughs> Done. Nice. <laughs> for a 14 year old kid, that's what you do. Okay. Yeah. I, 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 that. I would okay. just say I know you mentioned a world of magic, spirit, and intrigue beckons. I, if this is the case that this is set at like a magic school, then I feel that would make a lot of sense to mention directly in the blurb. Yes. If it's yep. just set at a regular school, then okay, maybe your job's a little bit trickier. But if it is indeed what the cover is suggesting and this is set at some Harry Potter style school, then I really think you need something in the blurb that's mentioning that she is attending like some magical academy or some magical school or something like that. Um, yeah. So, cause it's not clear right now. Is she getting expelled from regular school or is she getting expelled from magic school? Special um, school. Yeah. So that would be my main bit of feedback for that. Uh, and you know, maybe more like, keep not just a secret society but some kind of secret society yeah but if this is for kids how many how many reviews do we have on this nine five star reviews okay yeah let's, let's look, look at, at some the, the let's look at the re some of the reviews yeah at nine it's going to be all friends oh hang on right? i've been looking uh, at the amazon.com.au store so that's got less reviews let me look at the girls discover the truth hold on a second um I need to look at the u.s mean? store because the australian one doesn't have all the reviews on it oh yeah yeah backward country with, with no no reviewers that's right it's there's only five of us in the whole country uh, <laughs> why would you not come up with this book this is not that yeah, hard do you mean the steel trap the steel trap book come on amazon there we go there you go okay there we go uh it's still nine still yeah. nine Let's see what. Yeah. Okay. Like. Still nine reviews. Um, um, yeah. From my 13 year old this. daughter. I loved it. Uh, adventure, magic, Exciting cats action. and roses. Magic, cats and roses. Yep. Plot twist upon plot twist. Oh, twisty. That's cool. Twisty. So it's a mystery, right? It's a mystery. And kids love mm. mysteries. We yes. need more of that in the blurb. Um, secret identity of her dad oh yeah that's cool yeah put that in the blurb uh it encourages children to be empowered critical use their critical fit yeah that's all nice um i don't know if i'd put it in what <laughs> you guys seeing this this I mean, is that's a spoiler, isn't it? takes on all God. comers well, maybe her dad was an assassin. Yeah. I mean, yeah, but that, that's, a, that's a spoiler right there in the review. I mean, that's got nothing to do with uh, you know, the, the book or the person, really. But yeah. Yeah. Spoilery review. Come on. Yeah, shouldn't have done she that review. Ghosts. Bad on you, the reviewer. She fights ghosts. Yeah, that's a mystery. She's fighting ghosts. I want to know what kind of school she's going to. There's cool. a headmaster. I mean, I, the only thing for the blur, I think it's, I, I don't know, I'm not a young girl, so, I, you know, a, a, young, a young boy. You're anymore, not? You know, so uh, I would probably play, pay into the, the mystery set of it a little bit more. Yeah. Same, Same because it's the mystery, it's the, the, the mystery and the twisty adventure. And what um, kind I of like the final paragraph, is. though. If she's going to have a ghost of a chance, she'll need the help of her best friends, one grumpy cat and a whole lot of daring. Mm. I like that. <laughs> That's cool. That's cool. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I would say instead, you know, that is until she discovers her father's secret lair and a glamorous, uh, they're like, what, what secret lair? You know, just things like that are, are exciting. And I'd use the word mystery. Keywords are important. Uh, hmm. It's part of what come, what, what um, the algorithms look for when people search. There's also the, the it's the, there's the idea that um, there are power words within genres that basically play off people's um, psyche or subconscious, or whatever, um, that, that will make them go, ooh, they, they sound exciting. It's things like, you know, vengeance. Things people like the word vengeance. It, it says something to people. 
Um, so you have the, you know, words like that in there and it, it immediately plays to certain genres and sparks larger sort of narratives within people's heads. Hey, Mike, where's Charlotte? Uh, is she still here? She's, She's gone to art. art. She needs to be reading this and helping us out. All right. Well, I'll get it for her. <laughs> <laughs> Phone a friend. Do we have any other comments on this one or should we start wrapping up? Uh, I think I think we're good. good. Yeah. Yeah. Nice work. Yeah. Uh, Oh, this Max is neat. Tills, just needs to get Tilsley? out to a broader audience. Yeah. yeah, yeah, definitely seems on point. Like, out of, I feel in some ways, out of every book that we looked at today, this is maybe the one that is the does the best job with communicating what genre it is right oh, on the cover. Is. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, it just tells you immediately middle grade sort of fantasy. Yeah, if you like Harry Potter, you'll probably like this. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think it, it does a great job doing that. Yeah, for and and at the end for fans of right. Yeah, yeah. Mm. I mean, to be honest, you should. I, I think there's Harry it's always Potter there and Nancy Drew. Done, just at the end, just but you know, this is a blah blah blah, whatever story that can be really short and then just say fans of and then call to action, buy it now. Yeah, yeah I think that could be pretty good as well. It, yeah. Actually, it what it 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 work, it'll work much better for you if you say buy Dirk's books now <laughs> on every single book ever, <laughs> yeah, and just like Dirk to the Turner books, series, now, every blurb. That's <laughs> what I highly recommend to everyone listening. <laughs> nice, good strategy. Um, yeah, so thank you, everybody who was brave enough to send your covers and blurbs in. Um, yeah, we were pretty harsh at times, but that's what it takes if you want to <laughs> get some good feedback from people. Um, so any any other authors out there listening to this who haven't been scared by our extremely harsh criticism of those books. <laughs> Feel free to send through uh, any books and covers that you want us to critique in the future. No guarantees that we'll do another episode of this, but I had a good time doing this. I think we passed along some useful feedback. So hopefully that helps our authors um, improve their covers and blurbs. Uh, Thank you everybody for listening or watching. Um, And if you want to help support the show, you can head to patreon.com forward slash wizards, warriors, words, and we'll see you next week. Bye everybody. Thank you.